Hello, and thank you so much for being here. My name is Chrissy Hodges. I'm an advocate for OCD, particularly the community name that we call Pure OCD, which also is the name of my book. Yay! And I also am a peer, certified peer support specialist, and I work worldwide to help support and normalize where you're at with OCD. And we also provide referral consultations so we can connect you to many different therapists wherever you are in the world that can help treat OCD. Now, no CD is an app, and they also provide telehealth, uh, ERP, internationally. So if you want to learn more about them and their services and also to get support from their app, but to sign up for therapy, go to treatmyocd.com. Thanks so much, no CD. So today I wanted to talk about, and just so you know, it's freezing where I'm at. Happy January to you. It's, we're mid-January, and um, I have something wrong with my window. <laughs> over here and I can't get it to, like it's just wrong so I need to fix it so I'm sitting here and the like 19 degree weather is flowing in now I love the cold so don't worry about me okay it's amazing I would sleep here to let that wind blow on me but <laughs> my hands are a little chilly so I have the gloves on um wherever you are in the world I hope you're enjoying the weather but here in Cascade Colorado it's freezing <laughs> and I love it so tonight I wanted to talk to you just really quickly about something I hear about often and something I experience as well. And it is the having OCD, does it make me a bad person? Am I a bad person? And I'm gonna hit a, several different points of this particular sentence or notion. Um, but lastly, I'll share something that I feel like um, really is important to me. Um, and I have worried about, and I'm hoping it will resonate with you. But before then, I'm going to hit a couple different things. Now, y'all know, if you see my videos, I'm not going to hit every single piece of am I a bad person with OCD. I'm not going to. So if I don't talk about what you experience, just know that this video is not the end all know all. Um, but I'm just trying to give an overview. And your experience is valid, whatever it is. And OCD can do just about anything to make you go down any rabbit hole to think that you're horrible and a shitty person. So with that said, um, am I a bad person? On so many levels, I feel like OCD just grabs hold of this, right? And the thing that comes to mind the most, I'm just opening this so my light doesn't go off. The thing that comes to mind the most is when it comes to themes. You know, we I, I think that when any of us have these themes, they're, they're ridiculous because we know they're not true and your brain is probably saying right now, but what if mine is true? What if I don't know it's true? <laughs> okay, put that aside. Like if you're, if you're here, <laughs> you, you know it's not true. <laughs> There's your reassurance for the night. Anyway, um, we know we don't want it. We know that they're intrusive. They may not feel intrusive if you have them long enough, but we know that we didn't want them in the first place and they're confusing to us and they're tormenting. And if they weren't there, life would be better, right? So when we have these and we can't logically get rid of them, which is what we use logic for and anything else to solve things and to make things go away or to make things appear or, or whatever, when we can't do that, we have all kinds of feelings attached to that. We feel weak. We feel stupid. We feel scared that that, that means it's real. And then when you have thoughts that aren't aligned with what you believe or they're not aligned with what you want or what you desire. Um, and then of course there's the taboo themes and you know how I am. I define the taboo as things that you wouldn't talk really loud and openly in a coffee shop, right? So uh, pedophilia theme, incest theme, you know, murder, uh, bestiality, necrophilia, all those, all that stuff that you would never just be like, anyway, like really loud. When you have those, you know, the idea that you are a bad person because the thoughts were there to begin with is, is typically just walking right alongside with everything else. What kind of person would have these thoughts? Why did you allow yourself to have these thoughts? Who would have these thoughts? And who would have these thoughts and then not be able to dispute them in your brain and then they're just gone? Because if you continue to perseverate on them, you must be an awful person because no sane nice, good person would think these things. Okay, so this is the avenue that OCD could go down. And once you get stuck in that, and once you, once you get entrenched in this 
I don't want these thoughts, but I can't stop having them. Often the natural reaction is to go to, if I can't logically, even I know I don't want the thoughts and I know I'm not this person, but if I can't logically stop them, there must be some truth and that must mean I'm a bad person. And that sentiment can haunt you through seeking recovery later in life, even after you have felt better, you can always revisit it and go, what kind of person would have these thoughts to begin with? Or the dreaded, well, now I know what it is and now I know I can get help, but do I deserve help? Because what kind of person deserves to seek happiness if they think such awful thoughts? Well, the simple answer is you. <laughs> you. You deserve it. So I'm going to tell you why. And it is so simple. Okay? So brand this in your head, even though you're not going to believe it. <laughs> because this is happening to you. It's not happening because of you. That's it. This is happening to you. It's not happening because of you. Now we can argue, well, it continues to happen because I'm doing compulsions, but that's getting into the nuts and bolts of this bullshit that I'm not gonna get into that with you. We are talking about why you deserve to get better. Because this didn't happen because of you. You may think, uh-uh, if only I hadn't watched that documentary about pedophilia. <laughs> if only I hadn't have, you know, seen that murder mystery or whatever. No, no, no. Stop making excuses for your brain to say that you're bad. Right? You didn't choose this. This is where I get all fired up. I'm like trying to stay calm. <laughs> You didn't choose this the same way you didn't choose your themes. It's so easy to sink into the hole of I somehow must have caused this or I didn't stop it in time or if only I didn't do this or if only I did do this Think No, stop that shit. Okay, this happened to you. And this is where it's so important for you to hear and so important for all of us to hear. We didn't choose our themes. I didn't choose my themes. And my themes are vastly different from day one till day however many because I'm about to turn 45. But I didn't choose them. They just happened to show up. And I always think another thing would be easier. <laughs> but it's not. Be careful what you wish for. Okay, moving on. I'm a bad person um, in hindsight, okay? So this can encompass a lot of things. After you, get after you get treatment, maybe you're in recovery and then you're having to reflect back on trauma of having this or reflect back on things that you may have done or thought testing yourself or acted on, meaning this is so meaning like if you have sexual orientation OCD and you identify as straight and you're having intrusive thoughts about being gay, you may think I acted on the thoughts because you put your arm around one of your buddies when they said something funny, but you were doing it to be like, do I like this? Am I do you know, just testing yourself, right? Acting on, but your brain will tell you you're acting on it when really you were just like, okay, is this okay? What am I, you know, so you'll look back on these things and you'll go, I must have been a bad person for doing those things. Or you just think, I cannot believe my brain would think those kind of things. I am a horrible person. So this is like, I'm a bad person in reflection. This is another trap. Okay, again, and here's what's really important about this, is that when you are not in OCD, you cannot remember. You Okay, look at me, I'm all like, let's go. You can't remember 
how bad it was when you are not in the ebb and flow of it. And y'all know this because it ebbs and flows for all of us, right? So it'll be really bad and then it will break and you're like, yay, I'm OCD free. <laughs> it'll never be bad again and boom, then you're in it and it sucks. You don't remember how bad it was when you're out of it, right? And second, and this is the most important, you cannot understand things that you did and decisions you made, things you thought and why you thought them when you're out of it. Why? Because you were suffering and you were just surviving, okay? I, I think I said something earlier that I wanted you to brand in your head. Brand this in your head too. You were suffering and you were surviving. Those are two important words to remember because your brain is gonna come back and go, why did you say this? Why did you do this? What did that mean? And that must make you a bad person because you did this. Well, I don't give a shit what your brain is saying. We are doing everything that we can to get through some of the most tremendous suffering any of us can go through with OCD. Okay? So remember, this is happening to you, not because of you. And even after treatment, when you're in recovery, you can remember that and validate you did whatever you could to survive because you were suffering. Lastly, I wanna talk about this, and this is really important to me, and this is something that I struggle with still. <sighs> I think back and this is kind of in line with what I was just talking about, but it's more about just being a human being and how my brain operates. I think back on my teens and my 20s and even into my 30s when I just wasn't fully awake, not only about the world and OCD recovery, but also about not understanding how trauma can impact us. And I... I'm one of those people, I should do a video on this at some point. I'm one of those people that got better from OCD, from treatment, and then I was like, I want nothing to do with it. I want nothing to, I don't want to remember it. I don't want, I don't want to remember like my suicide attempt or hospitalization that I even had OCD. And, and subsequently, I, I, I basically had to forget my entire adolescence and teenage years and then feel, felt angry about it. But I was in complete denial, right? But during that time, I was struggling so bad because and when you deny that you have OCD, so OCD is not just, I have awful thoughts and it just comes and pounces on you like a lion every once in a while, right? OCD is the way your brain operates. It's sometimes, you know, struggling with uncertainty and doing compulsions to try to solve it until you figure out that compulsions aren't working. Um, and then you lean in and push into the uncertainty, right? So for many years, I did a lot of things just, again, surviving this. You know, I, I and I was in denial. I, I didn't want to remember my situation. And so, and even now at 45, I get caught in rumination cycles about the stupidest things. <laughs> You know, like I have some situation going on right now with a bill, you know, that was paid, you know, a month ago and then they didn't, you know, record it. And then I got this thing in the mail and I'm like on the phone with them and ruminating all day about, oh my God, like I need to make sure that, like, <laughs> and, and I think my whole day has been wrapped up in that. And that's OCD thinking, right? It's ruminating, it's mentally reviewing, it's checking and rechecking to make sure this was paid and why is this not this and why is this not that? And I think if someone was in the house with me today, other than Ollie, they would be like, you're getting on my nerves. Like, stop, let it go, be done with it. Let's just watch TV or, you know, just go do work or don't worry about it, it'll be worked out. And I can't, y'all. Sometimes I just can't. And I bet you can't either on some stuff. And you know what happens is when I reflect back and I see that that has impacted relationships or I see that I may have lost relationships and friendships, you know, in the past because of it, I think, oh my God, I'm such a bad person. I'm a bad friend. I was a bad partner. And I get stuck in that loop sometimes. 
I do think to myself, the only thing I can do is just be more mindful. And I don't mean mindfulness like sitting down and meditating. I mean being mindful of when I'm ruminating and choosing when I'm around other people to let that dominate. But I struggle really hard with that. And I don't know if all of you do. It, it may just be me. I know a lot of people with OCD that do. Um, it, it, it comes across as drama and it comes across as selfish. And maybe it is. But I try to think to myself this. Sometimes you're just surviving when you're suffering. And that helps me breed a little bit more compassion for what I go through. I don't wish this on anybody. I don't hate my life, by the way. I, you can have a great life cultivated by you with OCD, right? But it's also painful. And it's also, it sometimes gets in the way. And it's sometimes frustrating. And it sometimes impacts people in our lives. And I sometimes have to contemplate, am I a bad person because of this? And then I try to remember, nope, this happened to me, not because of me. And I will commit to doing better moving forward. So if you're in the trap of I'm a bad person for any of the reasons I've mentioned or, or any other reasons, you're not. This happened to you and I'm so sorry that it did. You didn't deserve this. You didn't. And you don't deserve it. And you do deserve to get better, regardless of what your brain is telling you. No matter what the thoughts are. No matter what has come into your brain. You deserve a good life. And you deserve recovery. So keep working. We'll see you next time.